do you all want to make sure that you attain at least 14 marks in your board exam yes you do right sure sure 14 marks that wouldn't be so bad and that's exactly why today's session is here today's session is all about the board previous year questions and we make good practice for you all also so which is why we bring you board previous year questions of inorganic chemistry in one shot yes there are a lot of questions that we are going to solve from previous year board questions as well as from sample papers so hello everybody warm welcome to Vedanta J English channel this is me your master teacher Nobomita Bhattacharji and let's solve some questions all right now this session is very very important because I am going to provide you with the last five years previous last five years questions which we are going to solve and it will definitely give you 14 marks because I'm pretty sure that you have looked at the syllabus and you know that DNF block has 7 marks. Yes, DNF block has 7 marks as you can see right here. Right? And coordination compounds has also 7 marks. So this is from inorganic chemistry. That means these two chapters we will be completing it. It will make sure that you are practicing for your board exam and you will excel in your board exam. Okay? All right? Out of 70 marks, 14 marks, you are absolutely going to get after this video. Alright, so let's check it out everybody. Now, CBC sample paper, if you go through the sample paper, you will notice that section A has 18 multiple choice questions, all of one mark. Section B has uh, 7 very short answer questions, which are all for 2 marks. Uh, section C has 5 short answer questions for 3 marks and then... Two case-based questions in section D for four marks and section E has three long answer questions, five marks. So out of this, a mix and match of questions will come in your exam, right? Okay, so let's get started without much further ado because board exam is almost there and we don't want to waste time, right? We don't want to waste time. So here's the first question. The first question, my dear student, is why chelate complexes are more stable than complexes with unidentate ligand? This is from coordination compounds. And the second uh, question is, what is spectrochemical series? What is the difference between a weak field ligand and a strong field ligand? I'm pretty sure that you have studied it and you know the answer, but let's try to solve it. So, chelate complexes, you must have seen that chelate complexes, they have multiple donor sites, right? Yes, you all know that ligands are the donors and the central metal atom, they are the acceptors. So, the ligands, they donate and the central metal atom, it accepts. Now the chelate, chelate ligands, they have multiple donor sites and because of that what they do is they form a ring. When they form the ring, they have strong attractive forces. Yes, they have strong attractive forces and that does not allow them to dissolve. Whereas in case of unidentate ligand, the unidentate ligands, they have only one donor site and they hold on to the metal with just one donor site. That is definitely weaker than multiple donor sites, right? So let's write that down. Yeah, chalo. Here we go. Chelate complexes. This is how you are going to write, okay? Yes, chelate complexes are more stable with with strong attractive forces okay whereas ligands ligands are linked to the central metal atom
through single donor site through single donor site okay they form strong with strong attractive forces yes which makes them also hard to get dissolved that is also something that you can mention here let me write that with uh, yellow color here okay uh, strong forms uh, because they form rings with strong attractive forces which makes them which makes them hard to dissolve Okay, I'm a little lazy to rub all of it, so that's why I've written it with yellow. You can also copy it down, or anyway, you are going to get the PDF, so don't worry about it. Now, moving on, why? What is spectrochemical series, and what is the difference between a weak field ligand and a strong field ligand? What is spectrochemical series, my dear student? Spectrochemical series are basically contains most common ligands. Yes, most com common ligands. And uh, based on the crystal field splitting energy, right? Based on the crystal field splitting energy, increasing order of crystal field splitting energy, they are organized in a series. That's it. That's it. As simple as that. So let's write it down here, okay? What is spectrochemical series? Yeah. Spectrochemical series. Um, a series that contains... that contains most common ligands most common ligands arranged in arranged in the increasing order arranged in the increasing order of crystal field splitting energy which is also called as CFSE. Do you remember that CFSE? Yes. Crystal field splitting energy. All right. Now, there is a way to remember it as well. Okay, There is a way to remember it. I'll write that down. But here, let's write down the difference between weak field ligand and strong field ligand. So, basically, a weak field ligand, what will it do? A weak field ligand will cause a very less splitting. Right? It will cause very less splitting. The splitting will not be so much. Why? Because, I mean, obviously, it does not have that much power. Right? So, it will cause, it will cause very less splitting. And what will happen is it will create... High spin energy, remember, in each orbital, right, in each d orbital, in each t, 2, g or e, g, there will only be one electron. Pairing will not happen. If pairing does not happen, that means they have more space. So, they will, what will they do? They will spin around. So, weak field ligand causes high spin complexes. So, let's write that down, okay. Weak field ligand. Weak field filled ligand what do they do weak filled ligand what do they do they make high spin complexes complexes and less cf sc all right Whereas strong field ligand, exactly the opposite of this. Very easy, right? Exactly the opposite of it. So strong field ligand they make low spin. That means pairing of electrons happen here, okay? Pairing of electrons. You will find that T2G will have 2, 2, 2, 2 electrons, right? Yes, it won't have one electron, but it will have 2, 2, 2 electrons, right? So, let's write that down. They make low spin complexes and more 
CF SU. Now, let me give you a trick on a uh, trick of how to remember the spectrochemical series. Okay, so let's write that down. Okay, let's write that down. Here you go. It is uh, I. Okay, I B so cute and so fine. Okay, I B so cute and so fine. Full stop. Okay. And then you write, and then you write, O oh, ox near water, O oh, ox near water, never enter a mine, easily can cover. Okay, it's a very stupid one, but still. O oh, ox near water, never enter a mine. can easily can easily uh, is it right can easily no a mine easily can cover sorry easily can cover easily can cover now check it out okay now check it out yeah so i be so cute that means it is I'm going to write it with um, blue color. Okay. I is I minus. B is BR minus. Okay. This is SCN minus. CU is CL minus. Okay. And is nothing. S again is this is basically your S2 minus. Okay. S2 minus. F minus, then this is OH minus, this is o OX, that means oxalato, okay. So C2O4, 2 minus, okay. Near is nothing, near is nothing, okay. Water, water you know, H2O, water is H2O, okay. Never, never is what? Never is NCS, okay. Never is NCS minus, it's an ambidant ligand, okay. Then you have enter so enter is basically what enter is basically e d t a remember okay e d t a 4 minus all right e d t a 4 minus amine okay amine is amine so n h 3 all right easily is e n okay this is your c n minus and this is your c o minus all right got it everybody Got it? CO won't have any charge. Sorry. This won't have any charge. Yeah. All right. So this is your, this is your spectrochemical series. Okay. I mean, it's a very stupid mnemonic, but I couldn't come up with anything. I couldn't come up with anything that made sense. But I, I thought that this was the only fine, uh, you know, funny one, which you could remember. IV so cute and so fine. And then you have O ox near water, never enter a mine easily can cover okay so that's what you can remember if you want anyway you're going to get the pdf so you can just go through it once again and once again and once again i think you will be able to remember it let's go to the next question wow have i really written this this looks pretty i didn't know that i could write pretty i think it took me a lot of practice to write on the board and only now it looks a little presentable all this while, I'm pretty sure that you went through the notes and you were like, what, mom, seriously, do you write like this? Anyway, slowly and steadily, getting better. Moving on to the next question. Okay. Account for the following. Separation of mixture of lanthanoid element is difficult. And uh, the next question, the part two of this question is the E naught value for M2 plus M value for copper is positive. Oh my God, we have done this so many times, isn't it? So let's take a look at it. Let me write down from here only. Answer one. Answer one. Do you remember guys? Do you remember? What is this? Lanthanoid. The moment a question from lanthanoid comes, the first thing that your mind should go to is lanthanoid contraction. And that's exactly is the answer here. Yes. So because of lanthanoid contraction, their sizes are so similar and the chemical properties are also so similar that they all exist in the nature also together and it's very difficult to separate them. Right? So that's what we're going to write. So the first answer will be due to 
lanthanoid contraction. Due to lanthanoid contraction, the sizes of lanthanides are very similar are very similar and so are their chemical properties. By the way, please make a note T-H-E-I-R. You don't write T-H-E-R-E. -E. Okay, a little bit of English lesson here, my dear students. T-H-E-R is possessive. Their, unka. Okay? Alright, in Hindi, unka. Okay? Their means right over there. It's a place. Yeah? T-H-E-R-E -E means a place. You're talking about a place. Like, vaha pirkha. There, I kept it. And T-H-E-I-R is like ours. There. Okay? Alright? So, are their chemical properties... All right. They also occur in the nature together. Occur or exist, whatever you want to write. Okay. They also occur. Let, let's write exist. I think exist is a better word, isn't it? Exist is a better word. Let's write exist. Yeah. They also exist. In the nature together. Hence, it is very difficult to separate them. It is very difficult to separate them. Okay? Alright? Do you guys think I'm spraying? I think it's pretty. I think I think it's a pat on my shoulder. I deserve a pat on my shoulder. To even improve my handwriting to this much, I have a really ba bad handwriting. Anyway, uh, enough of handwriting jokes. <laughs> Let's go to the next question. That is the E0 M2 plus M. That is the standard electrode potential value for copper is positive. Why so? Shall I write the answer here? Let me write the answer here, okay? So the E0 value for copper is positive because if you remember... The standard electrode potential is actually the summation of sublimation of energy. Sorry, sublimation. The standard electrode potential is actually the summation, the addition, the combination of three things. Stand, three things. Yes, ionization energy, sublimation energy and hydration enthalpy. Now, sublimation energy and ionization enthalpies are the energies that you provide to the ion. Okay, that you provide to the ion. All right. Whereas hydration enthalpy is released, it is given out by the atom, alright. Now all of these, we all know that energy has to be conserved, right. There should not be any disparity in energy. It should not be like, okay, you have given more but the one that is releasing is less. If that happens, that means something is wrong and that's exactly what is happening here. So let's write it down. Basically what happens is, answer number two here is that the ionization energy the ionization energy and the sublimation energy and the sublimation energy are not well compensated for are not well compensated for by the hydration enthalpy hence copper has a tendency
copper has a tendency to get converted to a to has a tendency to get converted to m solid state do you remember this yes do you remember this yes everybody so this is what is the answer now let's go let's let's move on to the next question we're not going to waste a single minute okay not a single minute write the formula of the following complex using iupac norms yes dichlorobisethane 1 to diamine cobalt 3 all right so the first thing first that we are going to do is we have to start with the cation and here everything is cation because there is nothing that is written as the anion right there is no counter ion that is written in the iupac name we have to write down the formula we have to write down the formula the name is already given let's start with the square bracket the first thing we are going to do is write down the central metal atom that is cobalt okay so we have noted down cobalt after that in alphabetical order we are going to write down the ligands name so it is dichlorobis dichloro that means cl2 okay bis means ethane 1 to diamine is two types ethane 1 to diamine this is a bidentate ligand do you remember i hope that you remember right so we can write this as en okay en bis so two all right let's close it now we are going to do the oxidation state do you know how to find out we're going to do the ulta of oxidation state because oxidation state is given here we want to find out the overall charge okay what do we want to do we want to find out the overall charge for that what we're going to do is co already is in the third oxidation state right so that means we know that it is three plus two into minus one en is a neutral ligand no charge so plus two into zero yes overall we should let's let's equate it to x let's equate it to x because that's what we want to find out so that means three plus three plus two into minus one that means minus two this will be zero is equal to x so x is equal to x is, is equal to what plus one right so that means this is in the plus one state okay this is in plus one state actually we're not going to write that how are we going to write we're going to write one plus okay one plus that will be our overall charge one plus that's how you write okay that's how you write easy easy peasy biryani is tasty write it down in the chat box everybody write it down yes i want to see easy peasy biryani is tasty by the way i do watch this session with you okay so i'm gonna catch you if you're not writing <laughs> do write that down Chal, moving on to the next question everybody what is lanthanide contraction and write two consequences of lanthanide contraction by the way this is the most asked question my dear student this is the most asked question here it was written as c b s c this is your CBSE. It has been asked in 2022. It has been asked in 2015. It has been asked in 2013. It has been asked in 2012. Okay. 2012. And it has been asked in 2009. So do you see? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times in the past 5 years questions you will be able to see this. So let's not skip this at all. And it's an easy question, right? It's a very easy peasy biryani question. Like what do you call? Laddu question, halwa question, whatever you call it. It's like that. Lanthanoid contraction. What is it? Everybody knows it. The answer, my dear student, is basically a gradual increase or gradual decrease. A gradual decrease in the size. Gradual decrease. In the size of lanthanoids with increase in atomic number in atomic number due to Poor shielding effect due to poor shielding effect of what F orbitals, yes, due to poor shielding effect of F orbitals is called 
is called lanthanoid contraction all right yes now what are the consequences what happens due to lanthanoid contraction i clearly remember that i had ta taught you this very well and I, ta and I told you that lanthanoid contraction does not only have the consequences in the lanthanoid series but the contraction the consequences of contraction is actually seen in the d orbital that in the in the d block elements in the transition elements where you see that zirconium hafnium niobium tantalum yes molybdenum and tungsten they all have similar sizes yes that means that the 4d series and the 5d series they have almost similar sizes that's one con consequences and the second one is it's very difficult to separate them it's very difficult to separate them because they all exist in the nature together so let's write that down consequences i'm not going to i'm just going to write one one what is one same atomic size almost same atomic size yes almost same atomic size of zirconium and hafnium niobium and tantalum molybdenum and tungsten sorry why did i write t that's a mistake that's a rookie mistake actually that's a rookie mistake absolutely rookie mistake because i was saying that i wrote it it should be w okay it should be w see how your mind told you to write t don't do that it's w the symbol is w okay and the second one they all exist in the nature similarly uh, exist in the nature together please do excuse me i'm actually under a lot of medication because i have sore throat i had fever so i'm under cetirizine and uh, calpol and all of these so a little high on medicines <laughs> Okay, let's write that down. Almost same atomic size, zirconium and hafnium. Okay, and second one was they exist in the nature together. Yeah. Who are they? Lanthanoids. Okay. They exist in the nature together. You could also write that it's very hard to. separate them you know it's very hard uh, difficult to separate them all of these also you can write so there are lot of consequences which you will see moving on to the next question account for the following transition metals and their compounds they act as a good catalyst do you know why of course we know of course we know yes we know anyway second question of this is europium is a strong reducing agent and the third one is chromium is hard whereas zinc is a soft metal chalo let's start writing transition metals and their compounds they act as a good catalyst that's because a okay uh due to variable oxidation state first okay due to variable oxidation state and and they provide surface area they provide great surface area for 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 other elements to get absorbed not absorbed absorbed okay and they provide and they provide surface area for other substances to get absorbed all right that is why they are such great catalyst okay all right now moving on to the next question europium 2 plus is a strong reducing agent let's do this so basically europium has a uh, europium tends to get converted to its more stable oxidation state that is eu3 plus yes and while doing that it becomes a strong reducing agent right yes so let's write that down sawal sawal question 2 and 
part 2's answer is yes u2 plus has a tendency to get converted to get converted to u3 plus yes and to get converted to u3 plus more stable oxidation state yes more, more common let's say u3 plus most common oxidation state It is a reducing agent. It is a strong reducing agent. Alright. Now, chromium is hard whereas zinc is a soft metal. Alright. This definitely is, is a, what? A question that is related to the electronic configuration. Yeah. Let's check it out everybody. Chromium. What is chromium's electronic configuration or atomic number? Let's find out. Scandium, titanium, vanadium, man vanadium, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese. Isn't it? Yes. Now, chromium has, uh, what, 3D5, 4S2, 3D5, 4S1. Sorry, not 4S2, 3D5, 4S1. It has 5 unpaired electrons as you can see it has 5 unpaired electrons all right so let's write it down chromium cr has an electronic configuration of 3d5 4s1 yes actually it has 6 unpaired electrons but anyway just let's just focus on the 3d part okay yes 5 unpaired electron 5 unpaired electron am i right yes now, what do these transition methods, what do they do? They have unpaired electrons, which they, which they, which they give it away to the sea of electrons. Yes. And when they give it away to the sea of electrons, they form strong metallic bonds, right? They form strong metallic bonds. Now, in case of zinc, check it out. In case of zinc, zinc has what? Atomic number 30. So, it is 3D10, 4S2. 3D10, 4S2. Zero unpaired electron. If there are no unpaired electron, Baba, how are they going to how are they going to send it to the sea of electrons? Right? They're not going to be able to send it to the sea of electrons. That means the metallic bond is going to be weaker. Absolutely correct. Yes. If the metallic bond is weaker, that means the metal is also going to be of softer nature. So that's exactly the answer. Zero unpaired electron. Zero unpaired electron metallic bond is weaker metallic bond is weaker hence it is a soft metal can you write that down because i don't have space anymore i'm not writing that down but i think you will be able to write that just have to remember that much part okay because it has zero unpaired electron it is it has weaker uh, metallic bond which makes it a softer metal whereas chromium is a hard metal because it has five unpaired electrons which are donated to the sea of electrons where they can form metallic bond it's strong metallic bond in fact and that's why it is a hard metal correct everybody great amazing no doubt easy peasy biryani is tasty amazing let's move forward now i had told you a lot of times guys a lot of times that please do remember this graph this graph is it's not very hard, it's not very tough also, right? It's not very tough at all, but it's just that this is a very important graph. It's a very important graph. And see, lo and behold, it is a part of your previous year question. So we're not going to skip it. Now, which element in 3D series has lowest enthalpy of atomization? Let's write it. Of course, it is zinc. What is it? The answer is zinc because it has... 3d10 4s2 0 unpaired electron 0 unpaired electron so that means enthalpy of atomization is going to be very low right yes 
unpaired electrons less that means weak metallic bonding so let's write that also yes weak metallic bonding all right weak metallic bonding yes that is why you can easily break the metallic bond and you can make it into a gaseous form next question what is the second part the second part is asking you why do metals of the second and third series have greater enthalpy of atomization due to more number of unpaired electrons yes because they have more number of unpaired electrons that means that uh, also one more thing that you can check is see on one more thing okay the third series and the second series right so that means series 2 and series 3 Series two and series three. Don't you agree that they have both d orbitals? They have both d or d electrons and the f electrons participating. Yes, both d and f electrons are going to be there. There will be unpaired electrons from both d and f, which are going to participate. Right? Yes, and because of that, they will have a higher enthalpy of atomization. So let's write it down. Let's write it down. Let's write it down. Yes. So the answer is going to be. The answer is going to be. Electrons are filled in d orbitals. Yeah, yes, electrons are filled in d orbitals, and the shielding effect of f orbital is lower than that of d orbital. Okay, let's write it down. Basically, electrons are filled in d and f orbitals. Yes, d and f orbitals, and f orbital, f orbitals have a really poor, really poor shielding effect. Which is why. All right. So basically, you are understanding, right? Both d and f orbitals are getting filled here. Both d and f orbitals are present here. There are a lot of unpaired electrons as well as now. What is happening is the f orbital has very poor shielding. So that means the effective nuclear charge increases, and they are going to the nucleus is going to pull the electrons closer to it. And that means that the size is reduced now because the size is reduced. Now you are not going to be able to take away the electrons. You are not going to be able to easily get get it converted to the gaseous state. So that's exactly what is happening, and we have written that. Okay. Third part. Why are enthalpies of atomization of transition metals quite high? You tell me. You tell me. What do you think? What do you think? I have just told you. Yeah. What do you think? All right. Three, two, one. The answer definitely is, my dear student, due to higher unpaired electrons. There are high number of unpaired electrons. There are a lot of unpaired electrons present in the d orbitals, isn't it? There are. There are unpaired electrons. there are unpaired electrons that are available yes which will form metallic bonding unpaired electrons which form strong metallic bonding all right which form Strong metallic bonding. Am I clear? Get it? Yes. Moving on there. Now, everybody, the most asked topics of coordination compounds. So just take a note. Just make a note of it because these are the most important topics and these are the most scoring ones. Also, you can't skip them. I mean, you can skip them. It's not like a hard and bound rule, but I would suggest you don't skip them because these are the sure shot marks that you are going to get. Nomenclature. It's very easy. It's just. 
you know four to five set of rules that you have to remember and you can easily tap 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 snap in a snap you can solve the question isn't it so don't forget that isomerism and coordination compound basically you know remember that structural isomerism stereo isomerism geometrical isomerism optical isomerism linkage isomerism coordination isomerism yes all of that yes these these topic is very important valence bond theory definitely don't forget it okay definitely don't forget it crystal field theory no way that is the most important part of this chapter i mean we find coordination compound to be a little tougher only because of crystal field theory this is the most important part so these are the things that you are not going to skip at all from coordination compound okay from coordination compound rest if you want to give it away also it's fine but do not forget this chalo moving on now let's do calculate the spin only magnetic moment of the complex feh2062 plus atomic number is given okay let's do this let's do it let's do part by part okay feh2062 now fe atomic number is given as 26 that means what is the electronic configuration it is 3d6 4s2 am i right or am i right i am right okay now feh2062 plus so fe in plus 2 state is basically 3d6 yes now for 3d6 if i draw the orbitals like this then it is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so there are four number of unpaired electrons what is the formula the formula my dear student is mu is equal to n n plus 2 root over yes and what is n n is basically your number of unpaired electrons so that means that 4 4+2 yes so 4+2 is 6 6 into 4 is 24 that means it is root over 24 no 5 5s are 25 isn't it 5 into 5 is 25 so it cannot be 5 the value cannot be 5 yes so it has to be somewhat a little less than 5 so can maybe maybe it is what 4.89 4.89 bore magnetron bore magnetron okay don't forget the unit guys do not forget the unit at all because unit always carries at least half marks don't miss out on the unit you will lose out on marks always 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 remember the unit anyway moving on to the next question which out of the following two complexes is more stable and why shall we do it i've done the solution already in the previous one so let's check it out i think let's uh, start solving from here let's start solving from here which of the following uh, has more stable cof6 3 minus coc2 o4 3 3 minus let's do it okay cof6 okay cobalt what is cobalt's uh, atomic number what is cobalt's atomic number scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt so that means it is 27 okay 20 Seven. If it is twenty-seven, that means it is three D seven four S two. Now we see that it is three minus here. That means that what is it going to be? Oxidation state is going to be three plus. Yes, CO. You can calculate it if you want, but I know that it is going to be plus three, right? So CO plus three. That means two from here gone, one from here gone. It is going to be three D six. Yes. If it is three D six, that means I'll have to draw the orbital somewhat like this. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now F fluorine is a weak field again, right? So it's not going to pair it up. It is not going to pair up the electrons. If it does not pair up the electrons, so that means the F six fluorine they will have to take the outer orbital. Yes, this is three D here. This is S. This is P three and six, right? So it needs six what? Six rooms. It it will require six orbitals. So S P three and it will require one, two, three, four and five, right? So D two D two. So this is what it is going to take. Yes, this is what it is going to take. All right. So there are no unpaired. I mean, there are there are. Four unpaired electrons. No pairing has happened. Yes. So can I write here? It is 
sp3 d2 hybridization and it is forming outer orbital complex yes it is forming outer orbital complex all right yes now let's go to coc2o43 okay c2o43 so c2o43 co is once again in plus 3 oxidation state as you can see okay it is going to be again in plus 3 oxidation state am i right yes absolutely if it is in plus 3 oxidation state that means it is again once again 3d6 okay I will be drawing 3D6 but it is already drawn. Now C2O4, oxalate is a stronger ligand than F6, right? It is definitely a strong field ligand compared to fluorine. Am I right? That means pairing will happen. That means pairing will happen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes. That means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes. Now what will happen is, now what will happen is it will take 1 S. And then it will take P3, 1, 2, 3. Yes, 1, 2, 3. Right? So that means D2, S and P3. Yes, this is what it is going to take. This is the hybridization. Now because of pairing up, CO, C2O4, 3, 3 minus will form a stable compound. It will form a more stable compound. Okay? Here what will happen? D2, S, P3 hybridization. Inner orbital complex. And due to pairing. Due to pairing of electrons. It will form. It will form more stable complex. more stable complex. Alright, it will form more stable complex. Do we understand this? Yes. Now, IUPAC name of PTNH32Cl. Alright, I think uh, let's do it here somewhere. Let's do it here. But I'll change the color. Okay, I'll change the color here. Or should I do it here? Let's do it here. PT. NH3 to Cl2. Yes, guys, this is the question. Yeah. So you have to find out the IUPAC name. The first thing that we do for IUPAC name is what? We have to find the oxidation state. Okay. Or OS of platina. Let's find it out. We will write X. NH3 is a neutral ligand, no charge. So that means plus 2 into 0 yes plus 2 into minus 1 overall charge is not given so let's write it as equal to 0 that means 2 zeros are 0 this is 2 minus 2 this will go that side which means that x is equal to plus 2 okay now let's write the name of it what is the name the name is definitely going to be alphabetical if you remember so diamine Diamine dichlorido dichlorido platinum platinum 2. That's it. That's it is your answer. Got it? Clear? Easy peasy biryani is tasty? Absolutely. Yes. Now, this question might seem a little tough, but if once you read it, you will understand. I've taught you this also. This is what delta octahedral. P is what pairing energy. Do you remember? If delta octahedral is less than pairing energy, that means what will happen? It will create a high spin complex. It will create a high spin complex. So you have to write that for D4 electronic configuration. Okay. For D4 electronic configuration, let's do it my dear student. Yes. D4 delta octahedral is less than P. Which means it will have T2G3 EG1. That's it. That's it. There will not be any 
pair yes there will not be any pairing okay yes but if delta octahedral is greater than pairing energy that means the splitting is more then pairing will happen okay yes here what is happening pairing energy is more pairing energy to pair up the electrons it will take more effort yes but delta octahedral splitting is very less so everybody will want to occupy their own rooms and they will all go up and they will take their own rooms got it yes understood so this is going to be your configuration next using valence bond theory you have to predict the hybridization and the magnetic character of nicn for two minus let's do it guys so this one i have already solved what is the answer here t2g3 eg1 okay now let's go to the second one using valence bond theory okay all right first things first everybody n i cn4 two minus right what is the atomic number of ni what is the atomic number of ni it is 28 isn't it nix ka zinc zinc is 30 copper is 29 nickel is 28 okay so 28 is the atomic number that means it is 3d8 and 4s2 am i right yes now if it is 3d8 4s2 we understand that nickel is going to have an orbital like this yes 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 now imagine nickel is also in plus 2 state right so ni in plus 2 state 4s2 will go 4s2 will go let's write it down here again ni in plus 2 state will be 3d8 only right 4s2 will go away so for 3d8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 correct okay? now cn is cn4 cn4 all right also cn is a strong fill ligand we know that cn is a strong fill ligand right so that means this will pair up yes once this pairs up then what will happen once this pairs up then what will happen is we will get something like this 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 yes so this will be empty if this is empty now cn needs four rooms so d s and then it will take one to p2 so d s p2 hybridization yes what is the hybridization hybridization is d s p2 now take a look at it take a look at it do you have any unpaired electrons no unpaired electrons so that means diamagnetic isn't it we know this very easy yes no unpaired electrons so di diamagnetic okay diamagnetic wrong spelling magnetic n e t i c okay no unpaired electrons so diamagnetic clear everybody clear 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 do we have another question here yeah write the formula of the following complex using uh, iupac norms okay let's do it here let's do it here what is it dichlorobis ethane 12 diamine cobalt 3 once again i think it's the same question right it's the same question so this is repeated this is repeated correct chalo anyway let's write let let me do this cobalt okay first first we will write cobalt then we will write cl2 all right then we will do en2 all right then cobalt is already in plus 3 oxidation state so what we will do is we will have to find the overall charge to find out the overall charge we know that cobalt is in plus 3 oxidation state so 3 minus 2 en is a neutral ligand is equal to x so x is, is equal to plus 1 or 1 plus 1 plus this is the answer okay this is how you are going to do this very easy see all of them are really 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 easy there is nothing to worry about all of you are going to get definitely more than 98% in your exam i can guarantee that i think so i think so i don't know how much you are studying anyway moving on write the iupac name of the following complex k2 pdcl4 let's do it very easy number 1 firstly what do we have to do we have to find the oxidation state of palladium okay palladium will be denoted with x so x plus 4 minus 1 
is equal to. Now, K2 here, that means this will be negative minus 2. Am I right? Which means that x is equal to minus 4 will go that side. It will become plus 4. Plus 4 minus 2 is plus 2. Clear? Yes? Now, let's write down the name. So, first we will write the cation. Right? First we will write the cation. The cation is potassium. Potassium. Alright? Then we write tetrachlorido. Tetra chlorido. See, this is the anion part. Yes? The coordination com complex itself is the anion part. So, tetrachlorido palladate. Isn't it? Palladate. And then within bracket this. That's it is your answer. Okay? Okay, now let's go to the next question. The second part is using crystal field theory, write the electronic configuration of D5 ion. See, delta octahedral is greater than pairing energy. That means pairing energy is less. Pairing energy is less. The effort to pair up the electrons will be less. But the splitting is very high. So that means what will we have? Yes, take a look at it. Delta O is greater than P. That means... Pairing energy is less, but delta octahedral splitting is more. CFSC is more. Which means that for D5 will be T2G. T2G, 5 my dear student and EG will be 0. All the 5 electrons will try and manage, you know. They will just like scooch over, scooch over. Even I want to join in, even I want to join in. So all of them will get into that T2G. You know, the, the lower level only, okay? They will get into the lower level only. On the EG level, they will not go. Because like I said, pairing energy is less. The effort to pair the electrons is lesser. Splitting is so much that they don't want to jump onto the EG level at all, okay? Now coming to what are homoleptic complexes, yes? When a central metal atom... When a central metal atom is linked to is linked to same kind of ligand or same type of ligand we call it Homoleptic complexes. Example CO NH3 whole to the power 6. Okay. Or it can also be PT Cl4. See? Same ligands, right? Cl4 times, NH3, 6 times. Okay. So these are the examples. Clear? Clear? Yes. Okay. Now, here is another question that is CONH363 plus is an inner orbital complex whereas NINH362 plus is an outer orbital complex. Let's find out. Atomic number is also given. Cobalt is 27, nickel is 28. And write the number of ions produced from the complex PTNH36 Cl4 in solution. Okay, let's do the part 2 first. Let's do the part 2 first. Take a look at it, my dear student. From here, you can clearly identify that this is the compound, right? This is the complex. And there are 4 Cl- minus which will dissociate, right? 4 Cl- minus will dissociate. 4 Cl- minus will dissociate. You might make a mistake here. This is kind of tricky. So, just take a look at it, okay? 4 Cl- minus ions will dissociate in a solution. Along with... Along with, along with one cation, one cation which is your PTNH3 whole 6, isn't it? This cation will also come, this cation will also be dissociating. So, 4 Cl- minus and one cation will be dissociating. That means, that means, yes, total... 5 ions. Total 5 ions will be produced. Okay. Total 5 ions 
will be produced from the complex. All right, got it? Clear? Great. Now let's do the first one here. Okay, CONH3 is an inner orbital complex. Where, where is NINH3? Let's find it out. CO is 27, it's given already, and CO in plus 3 state. Okay, so CO in plus 3 state, what will it be? 27, so 3D7, 4 is 2, but plus 3 state, that means it is 3D6. Okay, now NI is in plus 2 state, isn't it? Plus 2 state, yes. Plus 2 states, so 28, that means it is 3D8 system. Yes, 3D8 system. Now here, check it out. Okay, check it out. 3D6, so... Right, 5 orbitals here. 3D6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, right? Now, NH3 is a strong ligand. NH3 will definitely pair it up, so that means this will happen. Pairing up will happen, yes. Once it pairs up, then what will you have? You will have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Yes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes. So it will have D2, NH3, 6. NH3 requires 6 orbitals. Right. So 1, 2, S and then check it out. P3. P3. So this is the hybridization. Yes. D2, SP3. D2, sp3 hybridization sp3 hybridization yes so this becomes what this becomes an inner orbital complex inner orbital complex all right now let's check it out here okay this is 3d8 all right so let's draw 3d8 okay so one two three four 5, 6, 7, 8. Now here also NH3 is only the ligand. Ligand is same. That means here also pairing up will happen. Great. After pairing up, now check it out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? After pairing up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now NH3 is only getting one orbital free from the inner orbital complex. Will it prefer? It will be like, oh, I told you I needed six rooms all on the same floor. Why are you giving me this room in the left floor and then five rooms on the top? You know how you how people do that? Like when all the friends go together, they're like, no, I need all the rooms in the same floor. So they're not going to take this room. Instead, what will they do is, instead they will take the next available. So that is S, P3, and what they will do is from the next D orbital, they will take D2, okay? So, SP3, D2, okay? SP3, D2. So, let's write it down here. Let's write it down. Let me change the color and let's write it down here. Yes. Because of, because one available orbital in 3D NH3 prefers SP3D2 okay which is why it forms an outer orbital complex clear yes clear it eh? this is also easy right this is also easy it does not want to take this. This is unacceptable. It wants all of them on the same floor. So now see 4S, 4P3 and 4D2. It will take that. Okay. It will occupy those orbitals. Next everybody. Write the number of ions. Oh, achha, this we have already done. Right. I have already told you this. Now, out of the following transition elements, the maximum number of oxidation states, oxi maximum number of oxidation states are shown by. Hey, look at this. And you know the answer. I know you know the answer, everybody. Do you remember that table of oxidation states? Mn plus 7. Remember? Mn can show, manganese can show plus 2, 2, plus 7 oxidation state. It can show the highest number of oxidation states. We all know this. We all know this. This is what general knowledge, yeah? 
So no missing out marks on this. What do I solve here? There's nothing to solve. Everybody knows this. Everybody knows that table, right? That's what general information is available right there in your NCRT. If you haven't read it, please do read it. Please do read it. Don't skip it. Or you can just go through the DNA vlog uh, lectures that is present in this channel. Just go through them at 1.5x. I think you will be able to solve this question. Cool? Moving on. So what is the best way to learn any topic? Let me tell you that also. Let me give you some gyan, some to you know, topic related and some, uh, what do you call that? Strategies as in how to, best way to learn. So I think the best way to learn is, first of all, you choose a concept that you want to learn, okay? Now, if you are starting right in the morning, then first study the tougher ones. First study the tougher topics, okay? And then keep the, uh, keep the easier ones for the later because then it, it will feel like, it will feel like a reinforcement. It will feel like a reward that, okay, I have already used up my mental bandwidth in learning this tough topic, but now I can do the easy one. And inorganic is definitely easy. I mean, I'm teaching you. I guess it's easy, right? Now, teach it to yourself or someone else. Oh, that's the best one. That's always the best one. You never learn as much as you learn while you are teaching. Yeah. Seriously. You never learn as much as you learn while you are teaching. Every time you are teaching, you learn a new concept and it's very easy. So even if you have no one, in fact, I used to do that. Yeah, I used to do that. I had this small doll when I was very young, not now. <laughs> when I was really, really young, I had a very small doll and I used to come from school and I used to teach everything. Like I used to teach that doll, every single thing that I learned, all the homeworks, I used to ask it like, you do the homework, you do the homework. But obviously that was a doll, it was an innate, non-living objects it couldn't do so challenging my doll i used to do all the homework very easily i think you can also take notes from there and you can also do it moving on third will be return to the source material if you get stuck try to solve it without looking at the book but if you get stuck then please do return check it out see once observe what mistake you made once you know that then you can simplify your explanation and you can create your own analogies like you know how we did that spectrochemical series. It's very hard to learn. You will not be able to understand that okay I minus everybody knows starts from I minus ends at CO. But what about the rest? People can't remember. So until or unless you don't create a mnemonic you will not be able to learn. Okay. So that was a good break. Moving on to the next question. Now. Assertion and reasoning questions are also coming very much. It's in trend these days with CBSC. Yeah, CBSC is following a trend of assertion and reasoning. So do not forget to check these out. Let's take, let's, let's understand this question. Linkage isomerism arises in coordination compounds because of ambidentate ligand. Absolutely, we know that. Ambidentate ligand like NO2, they have two different donor atoms like N and O. Yeah, both of them are correct, right? So both assertion A and reason R are correct statement and reason R is the correct explanation of the assertion. I think yes, that is the correct answer. Option A is the correct answer. So do you know how to solve assertion and reasoning? Three tips. First, read the assertion, find out if it is true or false. Read the reasoning, find out if it is true or false. Now find out if both of them are dependent on each other. If they're dependent on each other, that means option A is correct. If they're not dependent on each other, option B is correct. If one of them is true or false, then you know it has to be either C or it, it has to be either D, right? This is the pattern that you follow to solve assertion and reasoning question. Got it? Clear? Moving on. No solution. It's very easy, guys. Everybody knows. Now, give the formula for the following compounds. Potassium tetrahydrozincate. Okay. All right. Let's do this. Potassium tetrahydro. Zinc. So first of all, what do we have to do is we have potassium. Okay. So we will write K here. Then what do we have? Tetrahydrozincate. That means zinc is our central metal atom. Yes. Then we have tetrahydroxido. What is hydroxido, my dear student? What is hydroxido? Is it uh, OH? or OH2. Okay, hydroxido is basically OH, okay. So let's write that OH4, tetrahydroxido, so OH4, okay. Now, let's close it. 
we know that zinc is in plus 2 oxidation state. Okay. So, first we have to do the opposite way, opposite of finding the oxidation state. Zinc is in plus 2 oxidation state. So, 2. Now, OH has OH minus, right? So, plus 4 minus 1. Okay. And now what do we have to do? Now, what do we have to do? Let's equate it to x. Let's equate it to x. Okay. All right. Now, we do not know that how much this has also. How many charges does this have? Anyway. So, that means 2 plus 4 is minus 4. That means x is equal to minus 2. So, we can write here minus 2 and this can be k2. Okay. This can be k2. Got it? All right. Now, same way, let's solve option B. Hexaamine platinum 4 chloride. Okay. So, that means that platinum Pt hexaamine. So, NH3 6. Okay. Platinum is in plus 4 oxidation state. So, that means it is 4. Okay. It is 4 plus 6 into 0. Okay. And uh, this should be equal to X, right? So, that means X is equal to 4. That means Cl4. We can write it like this, okay? This is your answer. This is your answer. I have already solved it. Now, copper 1 compounds are white, whereas copper 2 compounds are colored. Let's do it. Copper. What is the atomic number for copper? Atomic number for copper is what? 29. 29. That means it is a 3D10, 4S1, 3D10, 4S1, yes. Now, copper 1, copper 1, that means Cu plus Cu plus is what? 3D10. If it is 3D10, is there any unpaired electron? None at all, okay. No unpaired electron, no color. No unpaired electron, no color. Am I right? Yes, everybody. Okay. But copper 2, let's write it. Cu plus 2 will have 3D9. That means there will be one unpaired electron. One pair unpaired electron gives color. Gives color. Okay. Right. Next, part 2. Chromates, they change their color when kept in an acidic solution. What happens here, my dear student? Do you all know? I'm pretty sure you know that. Chromates, what happens is when they change, or when they are in an acidic solution, the oxidation, cha oxidation state changes, isn't it? Yes. The oxidation ch state changes. That is CrO4 2 minus 2, Cr2O7 2 minus, isn't it? It changes from... CrO4 2 minus 2 Cr2O7 2 minus in acidic medium, right? In acidic medium. Because of this, because of this, due to this change in oxidation state, Due to this change in oxidation state, color also changes. Remember this everybody? Yes, remember this? Great. Moving on. Zinc, cadmium and mercury are considered as D-block element but not as transition elements because zinc, cadmium and mercury they have they have fully filled d orbitals d orbitals definition of transition element is definition of of transition elements is that the elements must have that the elements must have
half filled or partially filled d orbitals right all right everybody clear great moving on calculate the spin only moment of co2 plus z is equal to 27 by writing the electronic configuration of co and co2 plus let's solve it okay spin only magnetic moment right so co is definitely what 27 as they have given it to us if it is 27 then the electronic configuration is 3d7 4s2 yes now co plus 2 will have what 3d7 yes because two electrons will go away right now, if it is 3d7, that means that if I draw the orbitals like this, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, yes, so that means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, 1, 2, 3, 3 unpaired electrons, yes, spin only, how is it calculated, mu is equal to n, n plus 2, root over, so 3 unpaired electrons, so 3 plus 2, is 5, 5, 3 is a 15. What is the closest number here? Okay. 4, 4 is a 16. So it cannot be 4. It cannot be 4, right? It has to be around 3. Point, uh, let's say 3.75, maybe. 3.75, maybe. That is your answer. That is your answer. You can calculate it. I don't have a calculator. So, I, this, this is approximately, okay. It can be a little different. But definitely 3 point something, okay. The answer will be definitely 3 point something. Am I clear? Moving on. Now, give 3 points of difference between lanthanoids and actinoids. This is easy peasy. Biryani tea is tasty. 3 difference, bacha logo. Okay, 3 difference. Let's write it down. Here, let's write down lanthanoids. And here, let's write down actinoids. Okay. First thing. 4F orbitals are filled progressively. Yes. Progressively. Alright. And here, 5f orbitals are filled progressively. Am I right? Next will be, except prometheum, all of them are non-radioactive. Okay? Except prometheum. All are non radioactive. Okay, here all the elements are radioactive. Now, third point, see third point is that they have a, I am writing here that they have low tendency to form complex whereas they have greater tendency to form complexes. But you could also write that about, you could, you could also write about their atomic numbers or so on like this. Okay, but I think that this is a better one to write. So, low tendency to form complexes. Higher tendency to form complexes. Alright? Crazy easy, isn't it? 
Yes. <laughs> All right. Now we have this question. Give reason and select one atom or ion which will exhibit the set property or ask property, right? SC3 plus or CR3 plus, which one will exhibit diamagnetic behavior? Let's take a look at it. It's very easy actually. SC3 plus, okay. Let's take a look at it. Where is my pen? Where did it go? Ah, here it is, okay. SC has what? Atomic number is 21. Scandium is 21. So 21, that means 3D1, 4S2. Am I right? Now, SC plus 3 will be what? Plus 3 will have noble gas configuration. If it is noble gas configuration, my dear student, noble gas configuration will always have, will always be diamagnetic, right? So, yes, this will be the answer. SC plus 3 will be the answer, okay? This is the answer. Now, second, CR or CU, high melting point and boiling point. Let's check it out. Now, CR, if you take a look at the Atomic config, uh, sorry, atomic number of CR, CR is what? 24, isn't it? CR is 24, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, right? 24. So, 24 means it is 3D5, 4S1. Am I right? Yes. So, that means there are 6 unpaired electrons. 6 unpaired electrons can form metallic bonding. Yes, can form metallic bonds. Can form metallic bonds. Am I right? Yes. Now, if you take a look at copper, yes, copper is what? 29, which means 29, that means it is 3D10, 4S1. Yes, which means only one unpaired electron. Okay, only one unpaired electron, and that means that Cr here will have higher melting point and boiling point than copper. Understood, okay? Easy peasy, biryani is tasty. Absolutely right. Now, let's move ahead, okay? Next question. Out of COF6 and COEN3, 3, 3 plus, which one complex is paramagnetic, more stable, inner orbital complex and high spin complex? Atomic number of CO is 27. Uh, let's do this, guys. CO, right? Cobalt is 27. Cobalt is 27. That means... 3d7 4s2 now cobalt is in plus 3 state so that means it is 3d6 if i make it like this here that means 1 2 3 4 5 so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 f is weak field ligand wfl weak field ligand no pairing will happen if no pairing happens, that means it will form 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes, then it will take S. It will take P3. Yes, and it will take D2. So this will be the hybridization. Yes, S, P3, D2 hybridization right and what is this outer orbital complex outer orbital complex yes plus there are unpaired electrons so paramagnetic am i right yes this will be paramagnetic now let's talk about this okay same here also 3d6 correct 3 plus, so 3D6. Correct? Yes? Yes, am I right? No, EN. EN is a strong fill ligand. So, pairing will happen. Yes, EN is a strong fill ligand. So, pairing will happen. That means this and this, right? Now, CO with EN, right? CO plus 3 with EN. So what will happen? C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yes. Now EN will require what? EN will require 6 rooms. So D2, S and then P3. Yes. S, P3, D2. 
this is the hybridization yes so d2 sp3 hybridization and what is this this is an inner orbital complex am i right inner orbital complex all right and since this is an inner orbital complex here is one more thing that we require which is my dear student that there will not be any unpaired electrons so diamagnetic and because of pairing yes because of pairing this will be more stable because of pairing of electrons more stable this will form a more stable complex correct everybody easy peasy yes very easy a hybridization once you understand there is nothing to be scared of nothing absolutely to be scared of now this is also one important question everybody and i when i taught you coordination compound i have taught you this also so let's check it check it out first we will be writing the iupac name okay so to write down the iupac name obviously we will need oxidation state so x plus 2 0 en is a neutral ligand yes plus 2 minus 1 is equal to 0 okay so that means that x minus 2 is equal to 0 which means that x is equal to plus 2 plus 2 is the oxidation state of platinum now let's write down the name the name of the compound will be dichloro dichloro bis ethylene diamine ethylene diamine platinum now we know that geometrical isomer for this complex is only given by cis isomer okay yes the cis isomer will give you the geometrical isomer Ge geometrical isomerism okay so that means let's draw it out let's draw it out cis isomer will exhibit geometrical isomerism which means if we have to draw the if we have to draw the compound let's draw it here pt yes 1 2 3 4 5 6 5 and then we will draw it here again 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so either it can be cl cl en en right or it can be cl cl en and en so this will be our dextro and this will be our levo right see this is rotating this side this is rotating this side correct easy peasy absolutely right biryani is tasty now this is again one more repeated question one more repeated question that we have studied a lot of time e not value of mn2 plus mn is negative whereas for cu2 plus cu is positive check it out everybody check it out here mn yes manganese is what 25 my dear student that means it is 3d5 4s2 now if manganese goes to mn plus 2 yes what is it 3d5 yes big due to half filled electronic configuration that is present in mn plus 2 the value will be negative yes so let's write it down due to half filled stability stability of mn plus 2 the e not value is negative whereas for copper hydration enthalpy same thing guys same thing okay 
hydration enthalpy does not compensate for does not compensate for ionization energy and sublimation energy got it yes now actinoids they show irregularities in their electronic configuration why why actinoids they show irregularities in electronic configuration because <coughs> Because of uh, due to due to F zero F seven like empty F seven and F fourteen electronic configuration of five F okay F fourteen electronic configuration of five F. All right. Yes. Now five F already five F can show these many. Apart from that, another reason would be, my dear student, that the five F six D and seven S, the energy gaps are so less. Okay, the energy gaps are so less that they can all of them can pass. All of them are right there. The penultimate shells are also very close to the ultimate sh shell, which is why the irregularities are seen more in actinoids. All right, everybody, got it. Now this is, I think, the last question and one of the most important question from the what, from your, remember that manganese, potassium permanganate, that question, everybody, that question. So let's try to solve it. Fe two plus plus MnO four plus H plus. Okay, so how are we going to solve it? How are we going to solve it here? So Fe two plus, right? Fe two plus. That means we are going to take here five Fe two plus. If you remember, it's there in your exam. In, in it's there in your NCERT, right? 5 Fe2 plus MnO4 minus plus, I think we had taken 8 hydrogen plus, right? Yes, we had taken 8 H plus. This will give you, this will give you, what? What will it give you? It will give you Mn plus 2, yes. It will give you Mn plus 2 plus 5 Fe plus 3, all right? And then what are we left with? We are left with 4H2O. We will get 4H2O. This is how you solve it. Right? Same, same, see? Fe, 5 Fe, 4H2. So 4 2 is 8, 8H here. O, 4, 4, O, Mn plus 2. Yes. Balanced. Balanced. Next. Next is MnO4 uh, minus plus H2O plus I minus. Okay. Let's write it down here then. MnO4 minus, how many MnO4 we, uh, do we have to take? We will take 2 MnO4, okay? Let's take 2 MnO4 minus plus, how many H2O we will take? We will take, let it be, let it be as H2O plus I minus. What will we get here? What we will get here? We will again get 2 MnO2, 2 MnO2, okay? 2MnO2, yes, plus IO3 we will get, yes, IO3 minus, plus we will get 2OH minus. That's it, yes, that's it. And with this note, everybody, the last top 10 revision tips I'm going to tell you. Firstly, what you do is rise and shine. See, a lot of people say this, but I am not asking you to wake up early. Your wish. If you think that your mind works better in the evening, your mind works better in the night, do that. Sleep well though, sleep well. Have your breakfast, don't skip your meals. Not a single meal has to be skipped. Don't think that, oh my God, I don't have time, I don't have time, I have to study so much, so I'm going to skip meal. No, no, never do that. Yes, log off. You switch off all the devices that you have, your phone, your laptop, your everything. And nothing should be on, nothing should be on, okay? After that, sol try, try solving past papers. Get colorful but don't make it a this thing also, drawing book also that all the colors in the world you will use because then you are only going to focus on the colors and you are not going to study, okay. Always stick to the plan, always, always, always stick to the plan. Do not deviate from the plan now, now is not the time. You take as many breaks that you want, okay. Follow that technique where you study for 20 to 25 minutes then take a 5 minutes break. 
okay then again do that same again do the same after repeating this for four times then you take a half an hour break okay then you take a longer break all right try teaching your try teaching yourself just go stand in front of the mirror and start teaching okay do these things and do not skip do not skip your sleep my dear student you don't have to go for last minute revision it's okay you have revised enough just go to the exam hall calm your mind with this note now let's move on towards our next question and let's try to solve it here we go okay yeah here is e not value for mn3 plus or mn3 plus mn2 plus couple is much more positive than for fe3 plus fe2 plus let's try to solve it i think this is easy this is absolutely easy once again what we have to do is for a right e not value mn3 plus mn2 plus now check it out mn what is manganese is atomic number atomic number is chromium then manganese so 25 25 that means it is 3d5 4s2 am i right if it is 3d5 4s2 that means mn plus 2 will be is equal to 3d5 yes this will have half fill stability am i right this will have half fill stability correct yes but mn plus 3 you check it out mn plus 3 will have what 3d4 would it like to be in this position no right it will prefer the 3d5 half fill stability over 3d4 isn't it yes it will now let's check it out for iron here okay fe what is fe manganese after that iron right after that it is iron so that means iron has atomic number 26 which means it is 3d6 4s2 am i right yes now check it out here fe plus 2 fe plus 2 will have 3d6 it would want to give away another electron so that it can go to the fe plus 3 which is 3d5 once again half fill stability half fill stability do you see it do you see it my dear student yes this is half fill stability which is why see fe can lose another electron fe has the tendency to lose another electron go to the fe3 plus 3d5 half fill stability which is why you will see that mn2 plus i mean mn2 plus does not have the tendency to leave this half fill stability and go to mn3 plus which is why it is more positive it does not want to go okay but here what happens is fe plus 3 it wants to get converted it wants to get converted to fe 3 plus fe from fe 2 plus it wants to get converted to fe 3 plus so that it can attain the half filled stability understood that is the reason okay that is the reason so you will have to do this and then write it and then explain it as well okay <coughs> sorry next question iron has higher enthalpy of atomization than that of copper oh very easy very easy fe what is the atomic number atomic number is 26 right that means it is 3d6 4s2 yes how many unpaired electrons are here how many unpaired electrons let's make it let's make it let's make it take a look at it see here 1 2 3 4 5 five orbitals so 1 2 3 4 5 5 and 6 yes that means there are four unpaired electrons sorry four unpaired electrons here take a look at it take a look at it do you agree that there are four unpaired electrons yes four unpaired electrons here so four unpaired electrons can participate in the metallic bonding isn't it four unpaired electrons can participate in metallic bonding yes whereas copper copper is what 29 yes that means 3d10 4s1 one unpaired electron my dear student that to just one unpaired electron so in here the it has only one unpaired electron one paired electron to form 
metallic bonding which one will be weaker which one will be weaker yes copper will be weaker no this is stronger isn't it yes iron has a stronger metallic bonding so let's write it fe has fe has stronger bond stronger bond hence higher enthalpy of atomization got it clear all right moving on next question sc plus 3 is colorless in aqueous solution whereas ti plus 3 is colored oh my god what an easy question sc plus 3 will have noble gas configuration yes noble gas configuration that means no unpaired electrons right no unpaired electrons right so if there are no unpaired electrons where will the color come from the color is always always attached to unpaired electrons right no unpaired electrons no color right now take a look at ti yes ti ti has what scandium then titanium so atomic number is 22 atomic number is 22 that means 3d2 4s2 right now ti plus 3 Ti plus three is equal to three d one. Yes, there is one unpaired electron. One unpaired electron, hence color. Yes. So let's write it down. One unpaired electron, hence color is exhibited. Hence color is. exhibited okay understood once again easy peasy biryani is tasty are you guys writing that down or not every time i explain and every time you understand something write that down easy peasy biryani is tasty okay all right moving on everybody write the formula of an oxo anion of chromium cr in which it shows the oxidation state that is equal to its group number what do you think guys what do you think i know that you know it i very well know that you know it come on Let me know. What do you think is the answer? All right, five, four, three, two, and one. Don't you remember? Remember till till you know they were corresponding to the group number, corresponding to the group number always. Okay, let me tell you. Let me tell you. It is definitely C R two O seven. Two minus here the oxidation state OS of chromium OS of chromium is plus six and group is also six, isn't it? Check it out. Find it. What it will be? Two x O always carries what? oxygen always carries 2 minus right oxygen always carries 2 minus isn't it so 2 into 7 7 twos are 14 14 yes and then here also it is 2 minus this is 2x so if you calculate it all over you will get plus 6 check it out you can check it out my dear students yes go ahead do that for yourself and find it out all right okay uh yeah Okay, moving on from here. Write the formula of an. Oh, I have just solved it, so no need. Now, what type of isomerism is shown by the complex? What do you think? What do you all think? I'm pretty sure that you know this. Pretty sure that you know this. This is what linkage isomerism, isn't it? Yes, the first one is linkage isomerism. Linkage isomerism. What happened? Is it linkage isomerism? Is it linkage isomerism? Guys, be honest. What am I doing here? What am I doing here? Is this linkage isomerism? Not at all. You are wrong, guys. I actually wrote it wrong just to test you. Is this linkage isomerism? No, linkage isomerism happens in ambidentate ligands. Whenever you have 
एम्बिडेंटेट लिगेंस दैट्स व्हेन लिंकेज आइसोमेरिज्म ऑफ दिस इज कोऑर्डिनेशन आइसोमेरिज्म ओके दिस इज व्हाट कोऑर्डिनेशन आइसोमेरिज्म वेरी गुड टू ऑल दोस हु पॉइंटेड आउट ऑन द चैट बॉक्स मैम रॉन्ग मैम रॉन्ग यस यू आर एब्सोल्युटली राइट कोऑर्डिनेशन आइसोमेरिज्म ऑल राइट दिस इज कोऑर्डिनेशन आइसोमेरिज्म गुड okay why a solution of nih2 or 6 2 plus is green while a solution of nicn4 2 minus is colorless all right everybody take a look at it just by looking at the compounds you can see that ni and i the central metal atom is same yes in both the uh, both the cases central metal atom is same that means that it completely depends on the ligand now here we can see that cn is a strong field ligand cn is a strong field ligand whereas whereas h2o is a weak field ligand right so cn will cn will pair the electrons up yes cn will pair the electrons up will pair the electrons there will be no unpaired electrons left there will be no unpaired electrons to exhibit color okay to exhibit color but h2o will not pair will not pair the electrons up sorry i wrote will not the it has to be will not pair the electrons up okay all right so this is your answer got it got it everybody clear moving on write the iupac name of the following complexes guys do you see in every question paper iupac name has been asked so don't skip it don't skip it you will lose out marks okay so let's check it out first things first for cobalt right x Plus five into zero. Yes, C O C O has how much charge? C O has how much charge? Oh, did I say C O? Sorry, it is C O three. Yeah, sorry, sorry, it's C O three. <laughs> okay, C O three has minus two charge. Okay, why is the eraser on? One second, guys. Yes, plus C O three has. Minus two charge, right? So I'm gonna write minus two here. Okay. Now overall charge there. This is minus one, so this should be plus one, right? So five zeros are zero. So x is equal to minus two goes there. That means plus three. Okay. All right. So oxidation state we have calculated. It is plus three. Now we are going to write the name. So the so the name would be pentamine. okay yes carbonato carbonato cobalt cobalt then chloride that's it easy peasy right this this we have become a pro in it right we have become a pro in how to write coordination compounds iupac name isn't it it can't get easier than this we all know that right chalo moving on moving on next transition metals they form a large number of complex compounds and uh, why next question is the lowest oxidation states the lowest oxidation state oxides or lowest oxides of transition metal is basic whereas the highest oxides they are usually amphoteric or acidic why so okay so first of all let's answer the first one transition metals they form a large number of complex compounds because we know that they have a very small size right then they have vacant d orbitals also isn't it they have vacant d orbitals they have uh, high nuclear charges as well isn't it they have high nuclear charges so all of this together makes them have large number of complex compounds let's write it let's write it okay ha huh. transition metals have very small size transition metals have 
very small size yes high nuclear charge high nuclear charge and availability of vacant d orbitals got it yes that's it these three reasons make them have a large number of complex compounds now the lowest oxides of uh, transition metals what happens is the lowest oxides are basic why because they still have some electrons in the in the in the d orbitals which they can donate because they can donate they become basic in nature whereas in the higher oxides what happens is they don't have electrons to donate rather they can accept which makes them amphoteric or acidic so let's write that down yes let's write that down the second one i'm writing it here okay in case of uh, lower oxidation state okay in case of lowest oxidation num oxidation state os they have electrons in d orbital to donate which makes them basic which makes them basic okay and in case of higher oxidation state they don't have electrons to donate rather they can accept rather they can accept electrons which makes them amphoteric or acidic all right guys got it clear okay moving on moving on how is the variability in oxidation state of transition metals different from that of the p block elements all right for this we will have to write something okay for this we will have to write now have you have you noticed that in d block elements the the oxidation state no it differs by one one unit like fe plus fe2 plus fe plus 3 right whereas in case of p block you must have seen that uh, that, that increases by two times <coughs> sorry like sn plus 2 sn plus 4 right that's what happens next thing is what happens in case of uh, d block elements yes the heavier metals have higher oxidation state which is more stable whereas in p block the heavier metals have lower oxidation state which is more preferable for them yeah so can we write that let's write that down okay how is the variability in oxidation state of transition metal different okay now part 1 the os of transition metal differ by one unit eg fe plus fe2 plus fe3 plus yes whereas in p block it increases by 2 units
e.g. sn plus 2 sn plus 4 okay next the heavier elements the heavier elements prefer higher oxidation states higher os in transition elements e.g. molybdenum 6 okay whereas in p block they prefer lower os all right yes this much you can write yes this much you can write i'm guessing yes why do they prefer lower oxidation state due to inert pair effect let's write that also yes due to inert pair effect Barbara, it feels like i pretty much wrote an exam what about you you are going to get the notes but i'm writing so much anyway <laughs> next acha Next, 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 okay. Chemistry of actinoids is, uh, no, 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 not this one, yeah. Out of Cu plus and Cu2 plus, which ion is unstable in aqueous solution and why? Okay, unstable, right? Cu plus is unstable. Yes, but Cu2 plus is stable because higher IE2 higher IE2 ionization enthal energy 2 second ionization enthalpy 2 plus right that means 2 electrons have been taken out so the second ionization en energy is compensated by is compensated by high hydration energy Are you getting it? Yes, got it. Clear? Amazing. Now, orange color of Cr2O7 2 minus ion changes to yellow when treated with an alkali. Why? Let's find that out, okay? Let's find that out. So, basically, what happens, my dear student, is Cr2O7 2 minus plus H2. If you do, then you will get 2 Cr2O4 2 minus plus H plus ions, right? Let's write it down first of all Cr2O7 2 minus plus H2O. H2O can be called as slightly alkali. Yes, slightly alkali. What will that give you? That will give you here 2 Cr2O4 2 minus. All right. And then you will also get what? You will also get 2 H plus ions. Okay. 2 H plus ions. So that means that the formation of chromate ions, yes, the formation of chromate ions, correct? Yes, the formation of chromate ions is changing the color to yellow. Formation of chromate ions is changing the color of solution all right clear crystal clear diamond clear all clear clinic all clear you know <laughs> yes okay Moving on, uh, did I answer both of these? Huh. Chemistry of actinoids is complicated as compared to lanthanoids. Give two reasons. Okay. Where do I write now? I don't have place to write. Oh. Okay. Where am I going to write? 
Okay, let's write it here. So I'm going to change the color so that you can easily understand. Now chemistry of actinoids is complicated because A, they are radioactive. Most of them are radioactive. And B, what happens is, what happens is, B, what happens is, they show greater number of oxidation states, okay? They show greater number of oxidation states, okay? So, for B, I'm going to, my goodness, I think I'm going to break some stuffs in studio today. Hoping not to, but yeah, okay. So, first one is greater variable oxidation. Yes, because 5F, 6D and 7S, they have comparable energy. And the second one is, what? Second one is radioactive. These guys are, these kids are radioactive, which is why it's very hard to study them. Yes, which is why it's very hard to study them. Got it, guys? Clear? We are almost about to get to the end. Yes, almost about to get to the end. Now, what type of isomerism is shown by the complex CONH35SCN2+. This is going to be linkage isomerism, right? This is going to be linkage isomerism because SCN is an ambidentate ligand. So let's write it. SCN minus is an ambidentate ligand. All right. Hence, linkage isomerism. All right, next. Why are low spin tetrahedral, tetrahedral com complexes rarely observed? All right. This is also very easy, guys. See, te in tetrahedral complexes, do you understand that the CFSC is very small? The crystal field splitting is so small. That means that pairing energy becomes higher than the splitting. Okay. Pairing energy becomes higher than splitting. That means we can write that delta T is lesser than P. P is the pairing energy. Yes. Now let's explain that. Okay. Delta T is equal to P, which means that in case of tetrahedral complexes, in case of tetrahedral complexes, CFSC is very small, but Pairing energy is high, resulting in high spin complexes most of the time, okay, is high, resulting in high spin complexes. Most of the time. Let's understand this, Bacha. So the gap is so gap is so small. Okay. Remember that hostel example I gave you. Let's say that after you are done with your exam, after you're done with your NCRT, CBC exam, you're done with your JE. Now it's time for you to go to the hostel. You, it's time for you to go to the college, right? Let's say that you have got your dream IIT and everything, right? Now, once you go to the hostel, the hostel warden tells you that uh, Either you can share your room with someone in the ground floor or you can take a room for yourself in the first floor. What will you do? You'll be like first floor, first floor. You will run to the first floor, right? Because you can take one whole room for yourself. Privacy, of course. Privacy is much more important, isn't it? Yeah. So you'll go take, to the, uh, take the first floor. Now imagine you go to another hostel, okay? Now, now imagine that your friend goes to another hostel. And your friend is asked by the warden that, Beta, do you want to share your room with ground floor another student? Or do you want to get up to the fifth floor and have your own room? Every time you have a class, you have to get down. Every time you come for lunch and you want to take a nap, you have to get down. 
Every time you want to fill the water bottle, let's say you have to get down. Every time you want to buy a pen from the hostel uh, store, you have to get down. Yes. Every time you are a little bit hungry, even if you want to eat Maggie, you have to get down. Would you want to do that? Five times, five, from the fifth floor, you want to get down and then you want to climb. Imagine, there are no lifts, my dear student. There are no lifts in the hostel. What would you do? What would you do? You will prefer to share the room, which is what happens in delta octahedral. In octahedral splitting, the splitting is so much that rather than jumping to the fifth floor, they would want to pair up with the ground state electrons. Whereas in tetrahedral, the splitting is so less that instead of sharing, they would rather jump to the first floor and take their own room, which is exactly what I wrote. Delta T is less than P. In case of tetrahedral complexes, CFSC is very small, but pairing energy is high. In, to, to pair the electrons, it will take more efforts. Yes. I'll have to convince you. Better take the ground floor. You will have a very good friend. Your friend will, you know, uh, teach you. Your friend will help you when you are in need. All of that sounds like bull crap. Nobody will buy that. People will love their privacy more, right? It's hard to sell, right? So you understand? So pairing will take more energy. Yes, that is. And which is why it results in high spin complexes. High spin means it's all empty. They can spin easily. They can spin easily isn't it so high spin complexes most of the time okay and with this very note my dear student all the very best for your exam i hope that you rock your exam with so many questions i'm pretty sure that 14 marks are guaranteed in inorganic right we will talk about the organic part and the physical part as well very 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 soon yes and i shall see ya all the very best good night bye